So yeah, welcome back to As The Road Returns. Uh, we're here with an amazing guest. We're going to let him introduce himself. Go ahead, my friend. Hello, my name is Dylan Buell. I am a freelance uh, sports photographer based in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, although I do uh, a lot of work throughout the country, but mainly based in the Cincinnati area. And I've been uh, started out as a newspaper photographer out of college. After a few years on that job, I transferred to being a full-time freelancer. I spent time in uh, the Milwaukee, Chicago area for many years, uh, and I live in Cincinnati. Although uh, I do pretty much just sports uh, for work at this point in my life, I also like to do uh, wildlife and nature photography on my own time. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, but the vast majority of my work at this point in my life is sports photography. You know, it, uh, I, I have such respect for your your profession. Um, I, I, I often like uh, call you guys, you guys are like the eyes of history. You know what I mean? You guys are there in, in um, just in the you know best and worst and no matter, you know, happy times, whatever, you, you the camera is going and you're recording the things that years from now, people, the only evidence that something happens is going to be the, the pictures you take, you know? Yeah, and that's actually uh, very much how I see my job as well. I actually studied history in college to be a high school history teacher. So that kind of framework in my mind of being uh, documenting history, you know, like you say, the good and the bad, that's very much the mentality I have with this job as well. You know, uh, there's a several, uh, I think it's about a month ago, they were talking about, uh, as I watched the show, CBS Sunday morning, you know, I've watched that show, you know, since I was a little kid, my dad, and they had the uh, the gentleman that shot the uh, the falling man picture in a 9-11. And uh, Elton John actually, they, uh, they had some charity event for the 9-11 families where they had one of the pictures up for bid. And El Elton John actually ends up buying this, uh, uh, the only actual printed photo of it. Um, and the, but when they went back in the history, like uh, that gentleman, uh, he took a lot of flack for just shooting that picture. And and the reality is that he. Uh, wasn't the first time he took a bunch of flack. He's also the gentleman that got the picture of uh, Robert Kennedy in the kitchen. And even though after people were like, stop shooting, stop shooting the camera. And, you know, it's like we would never have those pictures that history recorded to to know that these things happen. And, you know, those that don't study history are doomed to repeat it. Right. You know, so uh, can you walk us through that night? The the other night during the game, you know, even so, like you tell people like your job's pretty difficult because you're catching motion <laughs> on stills, right? Right. Exactly. How, I how mean, does that it, work? You know, it, it just comes down to a lot of times even milliseconds can mean the difference between getting a picture and not getting a picture. And that's just kind of the reality of the nature of what we do. And really, it's up to us just to kind of do our best to be in the right place at the right time and be prepared. And that's really what it comes down to. And uh, there's just a little bit of luck involved as well. But, you know, if you can understand the sport and understand what you're doing, you can kind of increase your luck and be uh, have better chances to be in the right place at the right time. It, it, um, when you're shooting, a, uh, it, are you looking through the camera? Are you looking are you, uh, or are you just? Uh, for the most part, yes. So what I like to do, not every photographer shoots the way I do, but uh, for me, I, you know, I'm looking through the viewfinder of my cameras but I'll actually keep my other eye open as well to give myself a little bit of periphery to see outside of what I'm just looking at through the camera as well. You, you sound like a sharpshooter. That's what the sharpshooters do. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot of, it's the same kind of uh, thought processes of like capturing the moment or looking, you know, capturing everything going on around you. So especially with a sport like football, where there's so many moving parts being able to not only see what you're looking at through the viewfinder, but also to see, you know, a player coming, you know, from the left or to be able to kind of see everything happening so you can react quicker and have a better chance of getting the picture you want. Now I'm a big camera guy and I, I uh, have <laughs> many, many cameras and I love different views. So how many cameras do you carry on you at all times? Uh, it depends on the sport. So uh, tonight for basketball, I only have two. Uh, for football, I will usually have three. Uh, baseball, a lot of times it's just one. My man. So it just depends on the sport really for the most part. So, so the other night, um, and do you have the photo, Jason, that we were to, referring to one of the photos? Of it? We can find yeah, this I'll get it. And, uh, and it, like, so the other night when you're shooting the, the game, the play happens where the CPR is 
you know, after the play, the CPR is being done. And then you're still um, there shooting what's happening, just the crowd, uh, the the players, everybody that's there. You talk, you know, the, the emotion and stuff. Are you emotional in this or are you in like job mode? You know, having that the camera with you kind of helps to serve a bit of a buffer in these kind of situations. Now, granted, it still can be fairly emotional, um, and it certainly was afterwards, because at least during the event that it happened and while things, the player was being attended to by the medical staff, we on the field didn't really have any idea what was going on because, you know, we don't have the benefit of listening to the broadcast, so we didn't have any information. Yeah. So we were only reacting with, you know, what the information we had, which was just basically just covering what we saw. And really what tipped us off uh, first that this was an incredibly emotional, difficult situation was the reaction of the players. You know, injuries happen, you know, in any sport. And it's something we are, you know, we cover and we are used to. Yeah. Um, and even in the previous Bengals possession, a, a different Bills player was injured and was helped off the field. So it had even happened previously uh, that night. Yeah. Um, but we knew something was very different and very wrong once we saw the reactions of the players, which is you know very evident in uh, all the photos you see uh, from that game. And that's what first tipped us off to that that something was very different and very wrong. And it wasn't until you know much much later that we actually realized what was happening because even uh, the players are pretty quick to kind of surround. Uh, the medical staff as they were working on it, which they, you know, very rightfully had to do so. Yeah. So um, even then we couldn't really see what was going on. So in that case, you're just trying to document what you can. And, uh, and you know, unfortunately it was just the very tough emotions of these players. Well, you know, um, like, um, so how long did you stay on, uh, the, how long were you there after the event and, the you know the ambulance left leaves and stuff you're you're you still there for a few hours or right so once the ambulance left uh obviously they suspended play and i think the time between suspension and finally calling the game off was probably about 45 minutes um many of the other photographers uh, went back to the media room i stayed on the field uh just uh to get some air and just to kind of breathe and uh, we basically just waited around to see if there was any sort of announcement. And once they finally announced that the game was going to be suspended, you know, permanently, um, I was, you know, left the field and went back to the media room. And uh, my editors asked me uh, if I could make it to the hospital. At the time, we were under the impression that there was going to be a press conference at the hospital that night. And they were interested in having me cover it. So after I got packed up in the media room uh, after the game, I uh, left and went to the hospital and was there uh, for probably, uh, you know, hour and a half, two hours. Uh, I left about 1 a.m. Wow. Like, they, they didn't have the press conference, but there was uh, there were fans there holding a vigil. Uh, so I was able to document that. Uh, but all in all, I, I think I didn't get home that night until about two in the morning. Wow. Wow. The, it's like uh, this event. It's like is one of those things is hit people with football fans, non-football fans out there. It's just humans, you know, like the humanity and, you know, the, uh, the unity of, you know, how much, you know, just the sports means to America and people and stuff. And um, I'm sure that you've been doing covering sports for a long time. But would you say this is probably like one of the most memorable games or have you had other ones or, not just that where somebody's died, but something that just pops up, you know, if you were to think about your most memorable picture you've ever taken. Yeah, there are definitely a few that come to mind. Uh, this game was certainly up there. I think no matter what happens with the rest of my career, I'm sure this game will always be up there uh, talking about, you know, some of the most impactful events I've ever covered. Um, another one that comes to mind is when I was working in Kentucky at a newspaper. We unfortunately had a high school student pass away. Uh, very tragically due to a medical condition. And wow. uh, I covered that entire event. And uh, as it happened, he was in the hospital for about a month uh, before he finally passed away. And uh, it just so happened that the he played soccer and his high school coach lived two doors down from me in the same apartment that I did. Oh, wow. So wow. he and I spent a lot of time together through that process, um, just kind of being each, there for each other. And uh, 
so I covered his that entire story, which was you know fundraising and all these community events, and finally the funeral, and wow. uh, watching uh, you know that city really you know mourn for this kid and this family. Uh, that that's always another one I go to as far as incredibly impactful emotional uh, events I've covered, and that one that event means a lot to me as well because uh, a couple months later. Uh, the, the boy's mother reached out to me and asked me if I, uh, if they could uh, engrave one of my pictures on the back of his uh, gravestone. Oh wow! Uh, which oh, which they, of course honor. I of course I said that, uh, I said yes, and um, and I've gone back there and because I, I moved away very shortly after this event, but I've been back there since and I've seen it and it's incredible. And, uh, that's something that I take a lot of pride in. That you know, even way after I'm gone. Part of my work is going to we'll still live on. Awesome. We'll still live on there. A um, couple more questions that we had. We just thought, as you know, been researching all after the last since last night and stuff. The is there any time you've ever felt in danger, like doing your job, like you felt your life was on the line? Uh, fortunately for me, I haven't haven't been in any of those situations too often. Um, even off the top of my head, I can't think of one in particular. There haven't been too many times where I've felt personally in danger. I've definitely felt uh, in certain cases emotionally overwhelmed, like, you know, like uh, Monday night, like uh, covering that funeral for that boy. Uh, but there haven't really been a time where I felt personally like my wife threatened, but I've been very fortunate. I know that's not the case for everyone in this uh, career, uh, but I've been fortunate enough that I really haven't had to experience that. In your, um, in your field of, uh, it, it, the, the freelance photography world, you guys witness all this, you know, again, you could witness like the worst of humanity and stuff and you can worse, witness things that are just emotionally devastating to you. Like what, um, is there any resources or anything that you guys, that, that, that you can turn to for like mental health and you, you can, you know, kind of let some of this out? Well, really, I, I think our best resource is each other. Cincinnati has an amazing photography community and we all get along extremely well. We're very tight. We, you know, spend time even outside of the job. We spend time together. And really this week, there's been a lot of that. There's been a lot of talking with each other, letting each other, you know, express our emotions and how we're feeling. Um, I know there's other resources out there or, you know, places we can go to and talk to about things, but, you know, really uh, so far, I felt our best resource is each other. Because at the end of the day, we all you know, understand what everyone's going through. And because we're so tight knit, it's an incredible uh, comfort to have everyone kind of be together and be very understanding and have that sort of sense of community between us. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's kind of like how we all cope with stuff, you know, and it's kind of like why when events like this happen, us being able to share the, you know, the message out there of, you know, um, it, well, in trying to find the positive and the silver lining in bad things is one of the ways we hear, especially here at the uh, at the company and on the podcast that we cope with. And we try to share that with us because, you know, the events happen and mental health is a big, you know, thing that's near and dear to our heart here that just no matter what job you do, there's there is who's taking care of you. Is there an ability for you to reach out for help and stuff like that? So we we think it's all it's it's important you know we have miss jody on uh she was able to hey. join us she has a couple of questions uh hey, just dylan. keep in mind dylan has uh he only has a limited amount of time hey dylan real quick and thank you so much for getting on um you know it was when i was compiling the the photos to use for this post that now has been seen by over 13 million people um it was really i wanted to convey kind of like what you guys were feeling because i know i've done photography for NFL and it's so different as you know like shooting action shots it's a different vibe so having to then create and capture something completely different um and I just wanted you to know the comments that we've gotten of your photos the one where the two players are hugging um has been literally worldwide of people making comments like this picture chokes me up simply a man in pain comforting his brother as they worry <clears throat> this photo should be I have gotten literally 12 different comments of people wanting to make that photo Time Magazine's photo of the year. Wow. 
So um, on, on behalf amazing. of me, I want you to know that I'm going to submit that to time because it just accompanied the two photos of one where everybody was racing around. And it was you know, number one, kudos to you for not getting really so much of Damar's body because that could be, you know, where people are like, hey, we don't want to see that's too much. But really getting the team in action and their franticness of, but in a, in a controlled, chaotic way of getting them on there to try to save him um, was incredible. Because I think if you don't know what it's like to be on a field and kind of see that stuff and just in a general game day, I would imagine how much chaos it is. So kind of take us back to where you saw that photo where those two players went in to kind of hug. What was that moment like? What was your vibe to capture that? Well, I have uh, a bit of a benefit in my past of having worked at a newspaper before where switching from one end of the spectrum of photography to the other very rapidly can happen. Uh, I remember in particular there was one night I was covering a high girls high school basketball game. And as soon as that was over, I got called that I had to cover uh, at a, a news assignment where a pedestrian got hit by a car. Yeah. So you really have to, you know, uh, be able to control your emotions and to be able to withstand that kind of whiplash of a gear shift of your mentality. And a lot of times it happens so quickly, you really don't think about it. You just more so react. So, and, and, and again, we didn't have the benefit of knowing what exactly was going on. So all we could do was focus on what we were seeing in front of us. And what we were seeing in front of us was this emotional outpouring from this player's teammates. And, you know, we were previously mentioned, you know, looking at silver linings, you know, from events like this. And, and I think that is the major silver lining in this event is that, you know, you this display of fraternity and brotherhood and how much these teammates cared about this player. Um, you know, they, they're not just a bunch of guys playing a game for a whole lot of money. These are you know, lifelong connections that these players make together. And I think that's by far the biggest kind of silver lining from this. And all those comments are extremely kind and very much appreciative. As uh, you can all imagine, it's been a, a long week, not a lot of sleep, um, but those co sort of comments do really help. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, because it just, there's so much that can, you know, it's it truly was a picture was worth a million words. Um, and it was so much emotion. And just today on my way to come here, someone had made a comment to me and said, wow, did you ever think just years ago, we had one player kneel on a field that separated a nation. And here we had players kneeling on a field in a different way. And it brought the whole nation together. And he said, in that photo of those two players hugging was everything that this nation needed right now. So, I mean, seriously, dude, kudos to you because those opportunities, as you know, don't, I mean, come along. And your talent was, has just made so many people relate with this. And I truly believe it was your photos that drew people in to even read the article. The post. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Well, thank you. I very much appreciate that. It's awesome. We're so glad that you were there. We're glad you took the time to um, come on here and talk with us. It's great to virtually meet you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you guys asking me on. And when people want to find more info on you, um, make sure you let everybody know um, your websites, where to find photos for you and where to find you on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Uh, my Instagram is just my first and last name. It's Dylan Buell, D-Y-L-A-N-B-U-E-L-L. -L and my uh, website is still in uh, to be honest uh, I don't update the website too often but you're <laughs> certainly welcome to, uh, to visit as well um, uh, but yeah that, if uh, anyone is curious uh, or wants to reach out that's where you can find it well I happen awesome. to know a good social media person if you know me. <laughs> <laughs> she is the best <laughs> well uh, thank you very much thank you so much for Dylan, joining for coming us on. Thank, thank you well thank you for having Thanks, me I really John. appreciate it